What we're going to be going over here is issuing and also the termination or the forfeiture here of restricted stock. Now that would be the case here if vesting or the surface requirements are not met, we'd have a forfeiture of this uh, restricted stock. So for example here on 11X1, Corporation A issues 5,000 shares here of its common stock as restricted stock to its chief executive officer, we'll refer to it as a CFO here, and point one here, the stock's fair value is $60 per share here uh, at uh, based on this issuance here and it has a five dollar per share uh, par value here and again at the issue date here in 11x1 here uh, and that's related to the services for the period here of four years for this restricted stock so uh, chief executive officer is going to have to work four years here for the company here before he can uh, he will be awarded this uh, restricted stock or this common stock and again here the investing uh, investing occurs here if the CFO stays with the company here for four years here and on 31x3 here the CFO leaves the company and forfeits the stock so let's look at how we'd record this here okay first to understand what restricted stock is here the restricted stock plans transfer shares here of stock and we're looking at a common stock in this in our example here to employees with the agreement that the shares cannot be sold transferred or pledged until vesting occurs now the shares are subject to forfeiture here if the conditions of the vesting are not met so let's look at our example here again we're going to have this restricted stock it's granted on the date here 11x1 and it's going to have a four-year vesting or service period required here on this on this stock here and what we're talking about this vesting or service period we're going to have some expense we're going to have to expense the value of this restricted stock during this service period but before we do that let's look at how we'd uh, issue this stock here again restricted stock it'll be the common stock here that's restricted so we're going to the restricted stocks actually are common stock stock here that's issued here on the grant date here 11x1 so again our grant date 11 year x1 here and what we're going to do is we're going to issue this and it's all based on the stock's fair value so that's the key here the fair value and we had 5,000 shares that are issued here to this um, CFO here at the fair value of $60 per share so setting up our common stock account here as an equity account on our balance sheet uh, the par amount here well we had 5,000 shares times a $5 par uh, per value per share for credit that here for $25,000 and then the remaining amount goes into additional paid in capital here for common stock excess over par par here so we had a $60 market price or fair value here and the difference between the par here and the fair value leaves $55 here times 5,000 shares so we credit or increase our additional paid in capital here for $275 so this is the case here we're going to have this common stock it's restricted here until for um, it's actually held here for the employee here until he completes the vesting period and that's going to be four years here so that's what we mean by the restriction here okay so we have our uh, total fair value here distributed between the common stock par and the additional paid in capital total a fair value here was five thousand times sixty dollars or three hundred thousand dollars okay so now moving over to our other account here in the balance sheet which is act which is a contra equity account here and this is going to be for the cost of the services yet to be performed here by the employee and that's our CFO here so we set up this unearned compensation account for the restricted stock and we would debit that here for the stock's fair value that is a 5,000 shares at $60 per share fair value debit that here for $300,000 this is also referred to as the deferred compensation expense okay so we've issued the stock here in the name of the um, employee here and we've set up our unearned compensation compensation here which is really uh, look at it as terms as a liability account here because if you look at your debits and your credits here they are common stock equity account credit plus uh, unearned compensation credit minus so it's actually it's a liability here as a contra equity debit plus here uh, debit minus here in our equity account okay so we've issued it we've set up our unearned compensation account here now we were looking we're going to look at four years here but we're going to have a, a, a 
case here where the uh, CFO leaves the company and he's going to have to forfeit the stock. So what we would do here, let's move over and look at it in these terms. We have to look at a, the compensation expense here on this restricted stock. So it's going to cost the company money here based on the <coughs> fair value of the, of the stock that they're issuing here to the employee here. So on our income statement, we set up this compensation and uh, expense account here. So what we do here each year here we take that total compensation that total fair value of the stock here at 300,000 and it's going to be expensed over the four year vesting period here so four years divide that into 300,000 we're going to get $75,000 per year vesting or expense here a compensation expense on the stock that is going to be given to the uh, uh, CFO here so debit that here on our income statement as a compensation expense 75,000 here on 1231 x1 end of the first year same for the end of the second year here 75,000 1231 x2 and we would proceed on like this 75,000 each of the next four years here if the employee stays at the company and then he would be awarded this restricted or common stock here but we're going to be looking at the case here where he doesn't but um, for our compensation expense here debit that or on our income statement here for seventy five thousand dollars each year and then the corresponding moving over to our unearned compensation here or a deferred compensation expense here as our contra equity account uh, at the end of each year here the we would credit that or reduce that unearned compensation by seventy five thousand each of the end, year end of year x1 here 1231 x2 end of each year here uh, credit that or reduce that by 75,000. So you can see here a debit on our compensation expense $75,000 here balances with our unearned compensation here or our deferred compensation here of 75 credit that here reduce that by 75,000. So those are the balancing entries here. Now we're going to look at the case here where the CFO here leaves on 3-1-X-3 or and the end of the during the third year here so he's gonna forfeit this stock so everything is gonna be forfeited here um, and so what happens here is we're gonna have to reverse a few things here the common stock first let's look at our common stock uh, a par and excess of par account so all you're doing here is what you had issued here originally um, at the grant date here 25,000 you're gonna remove that off the books here debit that out here for your par value of 25,000 same for additional paid in capital you debit that out here for 275,000 in this case so we had to remove that off the books here this restricted stock because uh, uh, CFO didn't earn this stock he left before the vesting date here and same thing goes with now what we have to look at is our compensation expense so we had uh, expense here of 150,000 that we looked at for the two-year period now we have to remove reverse this expense that was already recorded for those two years here. So credit that or reduce our compensation expense here by $150,000. Okay, so that's again on our income statement. We had to back out that compensation expense. What we recognize for the first two years here, we have to uh, reverse it out here. So just remember that. Reverse it, credit it, or reverse your compensation expense out for whatever period that was already expensed out here. Okay, so what we've did here, if we look at our debits and credits here, then we have to move over onto our unearned compensation here for our restricted stock. And again, on 31X3, everything happened here on 31X3 here where the CFO left the company here. So going over to our unearned compensation or deferred compensation expense, we would credit that here for the remaining balance here. We had 75,000 already on it, so the re what remains here to 300,000 is 150,000, so we credit it or reduce our unearned compensation by $150,000. So we get down to, it makes sense here because there's going to be zero remains here after the CFO leaves here, a zero amount. So that's what that's what we want. Now the reason you can look at it in these terms here for credit, and just by looking at your credits and debits here, our co uh, common stock here, well, we had to write that down here. 25,000 par, 270, a debit here, 275,000 for additional paid in capital. And okay, we got 300,000 in our debits here. And then on our credit side here, 
as uh, on our income statement compensation expense we had ahead of credit here 150,000 so we need another credit amount here and that goes into the unearned compensation here for $150,000 so debits balance with our credit so uh, if you have a little uh, time uh, uh, trying to understand what's going on here just look at your debits and credits here and the reason we d we had to remove this stock is because the employee here didn't uh, serve the four first four full years here we only he only worked two years and then quit and it had took four years here um, to uh, vest this stock so just look at this compensation expense here just understand that's the expense the value of the restricted stock uh, that you'd have to expense during the service period so we're doing it on an even basis here we would have expensed that over four years here but we only got down to our second year here employee leaves so we had to reverse that out here and then same for our common stock our par and our excess we had to reverse that out here remove it off the books because the employee or the CFO wasn't going to get it in this case and then remember that balance unearned compensation it just shows up here whatever was remaining here had to be reversed out and it all balances out here debits and credits so uh, unearned compensation if we look at it as a liability there's zero here okay so that that's the reason here so let's just go down here we can look at this one under Stein. just you understand this here corp a here the restricted stock plan the vesting never occurred because the CO CFO here left the company before the service requirement was was met here they would he had to work here four years vesting is required and then we can go back up here so he would have had to work here four years at the company before he would have gotten this common stock which we call the restricted stock so the other key thing is here um, that you everything it works off this fair value here so that's a key you have to know what the fair value of your and then you can assign it to your common stock your additional paid in capital based on the fair value and the par values and that and then this unearned compensation that's also the fair value here it's a balancing account between a common stock and additional paid in capital here that was issued in the name of the CFO in this case but nonetheless here you it's all based on the fair value here so you've got your unearned compensation here debit that or increase it here for the fair value and then as it's earned here each year here that was based on our division here over four years three hundred thousand seventy five thousand per year here as it's earned here then you would reduce your unearned compensation here and then you have to recognize it as compensation expense here on your income statement okay so that takes care of our restricted stock here just so you understand when we're talking about this restricted stock here in this case it was common stock that we issued in the name of the um, employee that was under this uh, restricted stock plan and in the fact that it didn't fulfill the vesting requirements didn't work the total uh, four years that's required to vest the stock he lost it so what happens it was never vet uh, never it would have to have been removed off here we just remove it off and and accordingly take care of our unearned compensation take that off the book so just you know zero remains here after the CFO leaves here before the vesting period okay so that takes care of our restricted stock plans here where we would have transferred some shares of stock to the um, in this case the CFO and the employees but if it had to meet those requ that um, requirements here and even though the CFO may have it been what was in his name here but he could not have sold transferred or pledged it of the stock here until the vesting requirements were met didn't meet the vesting requirements so he never got the stock okay so that summarizes our example here on uh, issuing and the forfeiture of, re of restricted stock